Hi, this is Andrew from DPS again, and welcome back. Today I want to cover a very basic element of remote monitoring, but one that gets a lot of attention because it is so fundamental it will control everything you do after you make this first decision. It has to do with what is the difference between an RTU and a PLC. Well, let me start by drawing our environment here. Usually helps to have a frame of reference. So you have some kind of central controller, central server in your system, referred to as a master, an alarm master, network monitoring master. And then it has a variety of devices underneath it that are out at remote locations, collecting data, issuing commands, latching control relays, whatever that is. So there are really two major types of those devices. And that's where we get into the difference. When you have a PLC or a programmable logic controller, or an RTU, a remote terminal unit or remote telemetry unit. There's not a whole lot in those names that really matter, so we tend to just use nice short acronyms, but there are some key elements here. Both of these are going to be communicating back to a master. That's not different, and the master can send them commands. But you start to see differences in the capacity. That's one of the first things that can be evident. So you notice I've drawn the RTU larger than the PLC, and that wasn't an accident. An RTU will tend to have lots of inputs, lots of outputs, just a lot of intelligence, a lot of things that it can do. Whereas a PLC might just have maybe a few and maybe a couple, couple outputs. It's just a smaller capacity usually. These are not hard and fast rules, but usually that's what you see. And probably one of the key distinctions from a system design perspective and as you plan staffing and training and just having your team a key thing about PLCs, you tend to have to write programming code into them. And that can be awesome if, you're, if you know what you're signing up for. Obviously, you're writing code, so it's up to you to write it well, and you have to build all the functions you want. But you can do some very advanced logic and build them into that, and it can be very cool, right? But just understand what you're doing. You're kind of playing the role of your own engineer. You've bought a, some hardware that's going to be hosting. It's got some standard physical properties. But you might be writing the code that controls them in a lot of cases, or paying a consultant of some kind to do it for you. You've got to hire somebody to do it for you. There's just something involved there. The difference with an RTU, at least the way we tend to build our RTUs at DPS, and the way many people in the industry do it, is to have more like a web interface. If you've ever set up a home router, any kind of network-enabled device that has an o a simple little built-in web interface, you know how this works. You're configuring things. You're setting things up. You're filling out some fields. You're not writing code from scratch. And while that, of course, means you don't have truly as much freedom as you do with code, it does mean that you don't have to usually hire a specialist who knows what they're doing, write a programming language for this thing. You are able to just get in the web interface, tell it, all right, use this IP address. Here's how I want you to react. Here's the name of your 32 different inputs. I'll give you all the labels. This is a smoke detector. This is a door. This is a high fuel sensor, whatever you've got. You're just setting it up. You're configuring and provisioning as opposed to straight programming. We commonly see PLCs in what we call the more SCADA environment. And RTUs, they really straddle the line. You will see them in SCADA, but you, where you'll also see them in more of a what we call network monitoring context, where you might be monitoring substations at a power utility. You might be monitoring microwave repeaters or tower sites in a telco. So really, that's your big difference when it comes to this kind of thing. The basic environment, how much programming is involved, and generally, the capacities tend to be a bit larger on the RTU side. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like this one. And until next time, I wish you excellent network reliability.